William Palmer was born on the 6th of August of 1824 in Rugeley, Staffordshire. He was the sixth to be born out of eight children to parents Sarah and Joseph Palmer. In 1847, Palmer married Anne Thornton and they remained a married couple until some two years before his execution, roughly seven years later. The year was 1846. William Palmer had recently qualified as a doctor after studying in London, but had moved to the small village of Little Haywood, Staffordshire, roughly four miles northwest of Rugeley. The first of many deaths surrounding Palmer started at the same time. On October of that same year, Palmer had arranged to meet a friend at the Lamb and Flag pub and although nothing was ever proved, it is speculated this friend was his first victim. Palmer was a heavy drinker, a gambler and a womanizer. He had challenged his friend to a drinking contest, a habit of Palmer's, to which his friend, a man known to drink copious amounts of brandy, accepted. One hour later, his friend became violently ill and was later found dead outside near some stables. Because he suffered from tuberculosis, a heavy night drinking on what is soon to be a cold winter night, a coroner recorded the verdict as death by natural causes, though locals stated that Palmer had a special interest in his friend's wife. It's 1847 and Palmer has now returned to Rugeley and married Anne Thornton on the 7th of October. His new mother-in-law, Mary Thornton, had gained a large inheritance and is said to have lent money to Palmer. She was already well off as the family owned numerous properties around the Rugeley area. She never took too kindly to Palmer and was in amongst all the gossip from the locals who knew of his lifestyle. Months later, she fell ill and although reluctant, she moved in with the newly wed couple. She died two weeks after her stay. The inheritance then went to William and Anne, but William was not happy with the amount received, expecting it to be a lot more. He was expecting his wife to benefit substantially from her mother. However, he had underestimated his mother-in-law. She hadn't left any of the properties to Anne. It seemed only a small amount of money was ever gained. The timing of Mary's death added fuel to the fire. People already had negative opinions of Palmer and this wouldn't have made it any better. We fast forward several years later. By this time, William and Anne had given birth to five children. Sadly, however, only one of those children had survived for more than a few months. Later, after Palmer's conviction, it is said that he was heavily in debt and there was speculation that he had fed the children with poison. It is also noted that around the same time, quite a substantial number of Palmer's patients had all died after leaving his services. Was this all a coincidence or was Palmer to blame? September 1854, it turns out that Palmer had took out a £13,000 life insurance policy on his wife with the Prince of Wales Insurance Company. And a few weeks later, just as her mother did a few years before, she too fell ill. By this time, Palmer had only paid one instalment on the policy, a premium fee of about £750. Anne died a few days later on the 29th of September. She was diagnosed by another doctor and the outcome was that she was suffering with cholera. At the time, there was a pandemic causing over 20,000 deaths across Great Britain. Cholera is a bacterial infection of the small intestine that can either have a very little effect to a very severe one, including vomiting and diarrhea, as well as muscle spasms. It still exists to this day. There was no evidence to prove Palmer had once again committed murder. However, it's not surprising that some people jumped to conclusions. One year after his wife's death, Palmer, still heavily in debt, attempted to take out a second £84,000 life insurance policy on his brother, however, failing to do so. He lowered his amount to £14,000, again with the Prince of Wales Insurance Company, he managed to take out his policy, and his brother Walter died shortly after. Unlucky for Palmer this time, insurance refused to pay out. Instead, they sent out two inspectors to investigate. Were more people becoming suspicious of William Palmer? The investigators found that Palmer had also tried to take out a life insurance policy for the farmer, George Bates, who briefly worked for him. The company recommended further investigation into the brother's death. On the 26th of June, 1855, Palmer's housemaid, Eliza Tharm, gave birth to a child. This child, Alfred, was the result of an illicit relationship between the two. In November 1855, Palmer committed yet another crime, this time sealing his fate. He and a friend, John Parsons Cook, left for Shrewsbury to attend a race. Cook, a fellow gambler, was a very lucky man and won what was an enormous amount of money for the time, somewhere in the region of about £3,000. As usual, Palmer was not so lucky and came away empty-handed. Later that day, while celebrating his substantial winnings in the local inn, 
helped Cook began to feel unwell. The pair both returned to Rugeley and checked into the Talbot Inn. However, Cook never checked back out. Palmer's diary states that Cook died in agonising pain. He had suffocated after being fed poison which had been placed into two pills prescribed to Cook for ammonia. Further investigation found that prior to his friend's death, Palmer had purchased strychnine, a highly toxic crystalline alkaloid used for killing pests. This was witnessed by a Charles Newton and the chemist had failed to record the sale as required by law. A warrant was out for Palmer's arrest. Cook's stepfather, William Stevens, arrived to represent his son and claim his winnings. However, unbeknownst to him, Palmer claimed that his son owed £4,000 of debt. Stevens insisted they do an inquest and post-mortem, and to everyone's astonishment, murder was the conclusion. At this time, Palmer had left for London to collect his friend's winnings. Upon his return, William Palmer was arrested on the charge of murder and the trial was transferred to the Old Bailey in London. The official reason for the transfer was because it was said that a Staffordshire jury could not be fair and would be prejudiced by local hearsay. The Home Secretary ordered for the bodies of Anne Thornton and Walter Palmer's to be re-examined. The chemical element, antimony, was found in all of Anne's organs. With all the evidence against him, it took little over an hour for the jury to return with a guilty verdict. William Palmer was sentenced to death. At 8am on the 14th of June 1856, 30,000 people flocked to London to see William Palmer's execution.